Hello everyone, I am Valerie and today we are going to create a very interesting way to present a UI phone screen designs. I saw this animation on an Instagram story by my friend Rossi. He is one of my favorite motion designers out there. He also makes short tutorials that he uploads on his uh, Instagram page. So make sure to check him out. I decided to make a tutorial on this because it will help you practice creating complicated pre-comp structures and organizations in projects when you need to present a variety of screens or designs in this project. Alright, so with that said, let's get started. Before starting the tutorial, I want to mention that I'm about to launch another awesome challenge in my private community where you can win some nice cash prizes. The challenge will be based on what I'm teaching in my online courses, so if you want to be a part of it, all you need to do is to invest in my Motion Bundle deal where you will get a lifetime access to all my premium 6 courses, taking you from an absolute beginner to advance in no time. You will also get a membership in our community, includes participations in challenges with cash prizes like I uh, told you a minute ago. You will also uh, get more than uh, 80 project files containing a unique animated scenes ready for use in your projects, saving you time in creating common scenes and effects. And the cherry on top, you will get a one-on-one -on -one private lesson with me to ask anything you need along your journey. So make sure to check it out if you are ready to take your career seriously and start learning After Effects the efficient way. The link is in the description. Alright, back to the tutorial. So first I want to show you the process of me preparing the designs real quick and mention a couple of important notes for you to remember while making similar projects. As you can see, I downloaded all the designs from Freepik. You can find the links for all the designs in the descriptions, but uh, in your case, it may be files you get from a client or designs you created yourself from scratch. In my case, after opening all the designs, I created a new document to add them all in there. For the size of the canvas, you can use one from the presets or do it as I did. I checked on Google the resolution of iPhone 15 Plus screen and used it uh, to create my canvas. So after creating the right canvas, I started to copy the designs into it. But if you want to create the outlined look to the scene in After Effects, you should avoid using any drop shadow or glow effects in your designs. Therefore, I opened the appearance menu and then clicked on the shape to find the drop shadow effect to turn it off. Then, before copying the designs to my new document, I selected all the objects in the design and grouped them together. This way, it will be much easier for me to copy the entire screen later. After I finished with this one, I moved on to the other ones and repeated the same steps. You see me locking the background layer so it will not interfere when I want to select all the objects. Alright, so once done, I copied all the designs to my new document and made sure that the alignment was set to the artboard and aligned all the screens to the center. Then I selected them all and scaled them up while holding Shift and Alt to scale them from all sides at once. Then to separate all the scenes to each individual layer, I opened the hamburger menu and chose release to layers sequence. Then I dragged all the layers from the first layer out and deleted the remaining empty layer. After you get each screen separated into each individual layer, don't forget to give the layers a name for a more organized workflow later in After Effects. Once done, save your Illustrator file and give it a name so you can find it quickly. You can repeat this process or download the project file that includes my already separated Illustrator file with the animated effect that we will create right now in After Effects. The link is in the descriptions. 
Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and help me reach the 100,000 subs by the end of this year. Alright, so now let's dive into After Effects. First, we will create the scene and animate it. And only then start adding our screen designs that we will create or got from the client to the project. With that said, let's create a new full HD composition. Now, the first thing we want to do is create a comp that will be our phone, in which we will place the different screen designs we have. For this, we need to create a new composition with the phone size we get from Google. So let's create a new composition. We can call it phone one and then change the width and the height. Great, now let's double click on the rectangle tool to create a new shape with the comp size. Color it in white and turn off the stroke. Great, now let's select this layer and press Ctrl D to duplicate it. This layer will be our mask for creating rounded corners for the screen. And for this layer, we need to pre-compose it. Let's call it screen one and make sure both are selected. This pre-comp will be the place where we will add our screen designs. Let's turn it off for now and round the corners of the mask. I'll set it to 150. Now we've got a nice and rounded shape now let's turn back on the screen precomp and use the track mat function to set it as an alpha of the shape above it. Now in this comp you can bring any designs that you need and it will appear as a screen with rounded corners. Alright, let's go back to the master comp and create the first screen column. For this, let's drag the phone precomp we created and scale it down to 50 because it's too big. Next, we need to create two duplicates of it and place them at an equal distance from each other. So let's select this layer and duplicate it using Ctrl or Command D. Now press P to see the position property and move it up. Set the value to a rounded number. Next, let's duplicate it once again and move the bottom one down here. Set the value to a rounded number and then change it by using the up or down arrows while holding shift. Move it until you see they are placed equally from one another. Great, and now we need to pre-compose all these pre-comps into one pre-comp. Let's name it scene 1. Now enter this pre-comp and let's adjust the size of it to fit the size of the pre-comps we have here. To do this, press Ctrl or Command K and now adjust the width to be a little bigger than the width of the phone. For the height, we need to scale it up and try to make the empty area in the upper part and the lower part of the pre-comp the same as the distance between the phones when they're combined. I'll set it to 3980 for now and try to explain you one more time what I mean. So the empty area in the upper part and the lower part when combined should create the same amount of distance as between the phones. All right, don't worry, in a minute you'll understand why. For now, let's go back to the master comp and continue preparing the scene. So let's duplicate the pre-comp we have here and move it to the right. You can activate the snapping function and then drag the precomp from the area you need it to snap. Let's duplicate it once again and move the bottom comp to the left. Again, drag the layer from the area you want to snap it with. Great, let's repeat this process two more times. Awesome, now let's create the isometric camera angle. For this, first we need to convert all the layers to 3D layers. Then let's right click and create a new camera. It doesn't matter which type of camera you choose, the most important thing is to choose a very large millimeter for the lens. After creating the camera, we need to create a new null object and convert it to a 3D layer as well. Then 
parent the camera to this null object. Now select the camera and press P and set the Z axis to minus 10,000. Then open up the camera options and set the zoom property to 10,000. Great. Now we can close all the camera parameters and select the null and press R to see the rotation properties. Now in orientation set the X rotation axis to 45, the Y axis to 35 and the Z axis to 35 as well. If you want to flip the angle just add minus to the Y and the Z values. Great. Now you can select the camera, press P and adjust the angle as you like. I think it looks great and now we have ready to animate the scene. For this we will use the motion tile effect. First let's scale up the output height to have more duplicates of the screens. And as you can see here, we have some unequal distances. And that's happening because in this composition, there is no good division of the upper and the lower empty areas. Therefore, let's hit Ctrl or Command K to adjust the height of this comb. We can bring it down to 3940 for now and see how that looks. As you can see, it's too much. Let's try to set it. To 3960. Great, that's the perfect number. Now we can animate this part. So let's create the first keyframe for the tile center property at the beginning of the animation and now move to let's say second uh, 20 and change this value and try to bring the scene to how it looked in the beginning to have a perfect looped animation. Set the value to a rounded number and then hold shift and use the up and down arrows to adjust it slightly while always looking at the preview to see that uh, the scene looks as it did in the beginning. Alright, I think the screens now perfectly uh, look like they did in the beginning. If the animation in your case doesn't end and start smoothly, you might need to adjust the title center property. But to be honest, you don't have to make it uh, animated in the perfect loop, so it's okay. Alright, and now let's select this precomp and copy the animated effect on it to paste it on the rest of the precomps. As you can see, everything moved in the same direction now. To change it, we can select these precomps press U to see the keyframes and now select the keyframes, right click and reverse the animation. Alright, so now after finishing preparing and animating the scene, let's make it look like an outlined trendy design. For this, first we need to pre-compose all the layers we have here. Let's call it All Scenes and then hit OK. Now let's create a new solid to use as a background in the scene. Choose a bright color for it and make sure it's a comp side. Next place this layer below the precomp and now right click on the precomp, go to layer styles and add a new stroke. Open the stroke, change the color to black and play around with the size to get something that you like. I'll set it to 3. Ok, and now let's add a drop shadow effect to it. But pay attention if you are adding the drop shadow from the effects tab, it may not function well because of the layer styles we added to this precomp. As you can see, I can't really control the opacity of the effect. So to have a properly functioning drop shadow effect, we need to add it from the layer styles of this precomp. Let's close the stroke and open the drop shadow. Now you can play around with the settings until you get some nice and contrasting look. And you can now also control the opacity if you want to make the shadow uh, look brighter. Alright, I bring it back to 100 and close the layer to move on with the tutorial. So now after preparing animating and designing the scene, we can finally add our UI design. Let's see how to do that. But before that, if you are enjoying this tutorial, 
please subscribe to my channel to help me finally after 4 years on YouTube reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year. Alright, so to add the UI screen designs, let's go back to the project panel and drag the screen designs we have to the project. We can drag the spree comb to its folder and now let's tag the master comb in a different color because we'll have a lot of other pre -combs here in a minute. And then let's click here for a more organized look. Alright, and now let's enter the spree comb, then enter the scene and learn how to add the UI designs to this phone pre -combs. So let's enter one of the pre -combs and then enter the screen pre -comb. Now drag one of your designs to the spree comp and to work in a more organized way let's tag this file in green so we can know that we already used it in the project. Great so now when we go back to scene 1 we will see the same designs for all the fonts because all the pre -comps we have here are duplicates of one phone pre -comp. Now I want to show you how to add additional designs to the project. For this, the first thing we need to do is create a new duplicate of the phone we have in the project. And to be able to make changes without affecting the rest of the phone pre -combs, we must duplicate it from the project panel. So let's do it and learn how to work in a very organized way so we can have a very clean project. First, let's close all the open pre -combs we have here. Now go to the project panel make sure no file is selected and create a new folder. You can call it scene 1. Then select all the pre -combs belonging to scene 1 and drag them to the folder we just created. Now let's enter the scene 1 folder and start creating new fonts for this comp. Since in the font comp there is another comp named screen we must create a duplicate for it as well as for the phone comp. So let's do it right now. Select screen 1 and phone 1 comps and press Ctrl or Command D to duplicate them. Let's duplicate them one more time because we need to have three different fonts in total in the scene. Great, and now to switch between the old comp and the new ones we just created, select the comp you want to replace, hold the Alt or the Option key on Mac and drag the new one onto the selected pre-comp you want to replace. Now let's do the same for this comp and replace it with phone 3. Next we need to enter the new pre-comp and replace the screen phone we have here with the new screen for duplicate. So select it and while holding Alt drag the new phone comp onto it. Let's do the same with the phone 3 comp. Replace the screen we have here with screen 3. Now we can enter the spree comp, select the design we have here and replace it with the new one while holding Alt. Don't forget to tag it in green to know that you already used this one. Ok now let's go back to phone 2 and enter screen 2 to replace the design here as well. Alright, so now after adding three different UI screen designs, we can go back to the master comp and check how that looks. I think it looks great, but now I want to teach you how you can replace the entire scene. That is create another screens column that we have in all scenes comp. Because right now they are all the same comps, just moving in another direction. So let's create a brand new one. To start let's go back to the project panel, make sure no file is selected and create another folder. This time let's call it scene 2. Now let's duplicate all the pre -combs that scene 1 is structured from and tag them in a different color to differentiate them from other comps. Next let's drag all the new pre -combs to the folder we just created. And now let's select the pre -comp and replace it with the new scene we have here. Let me just change the name to scene 2, I don't know why After Effects name it as scene 3. Anyway, now hold Alt and replace it with the selected comp in the scene. 
Now let's enter this precomp and replace the old font comps with the new ones. There is a script called TrueComp Duplicator that will help you create new precomps much faster, but in my case, I want to show you this way for all the beginners out there who are not familiar with comp organization in After Effects. My goal is to help you practice these actions so you can understand how uh, the comps functionality works here in After Effects. Alright, now let's select all the precomps here and open them all at once. Then continue replacing the old screens precomps in each one with the new ones. Once done, let's replace the UI designs with new ones in each new screen comp. And now I want to show you that sometimes you may encounter a small problem in your designs. It seems that there may be some a path or object we didn't deal with in the preparation phase in Illustrator. In these situations, I usually uh, right click on the problematic file and search for it in the explorer. Now let's enter this file and try to find the problem. If you don't see anything, you can select the direct selection tool and select the problematic area. As you can see, there are some paths here. To fix it, I clicked on the one of the points and adjust it. Alright, so after fixing the problem, don't forget to hit Ctrl or Command S to save this file. When you go back to After Effects, your file will be updated automatically. Alright, I see that I still need to bring this layer up a little bit. Okay, that's good enough. Let's move on and continue updating the UI screen's design. Alright, so once we finished, let's switch this scene to the new one, which is scene 2. Great, so now we have finished preparing the project and are ready to render it. But before that, let me show you a small issue I found when using this technique. When we go back to the master comp, you can see that this, in this area uh, there is a problem with the shadow. It is happening because of the motion tile effect we applied on the precomps inside this comp. Sure, you can select this comp, press S and scale it a little bit, but by doing that you will lose a little bit of the quality. To do it in the right way, just enter this comp, press Ctrl or Command K and scale the resolution of it. So now when we go back to the master comp, we will see that the drop shadow effect looks better due to the scaling of the dimensions of this comp. And now you are totally ready to render this project. And before we are finishing the tutorial, I want to show you something cool. I found that if we rotate the Y axis of the precomps we have in this comp, we can get some very interesting results. Let me show you what I mean. Let's enter this precomp and now select this comp and press AR to rotate the Y rotation axis to 10. Then select the next one and rotate it to minus 10. Continue doing this for the rest of the comps and as you can see it creates a little bit uh, more uh, interesting presentation of the uh, screen's designs. Alright, I think it looks great. And with this, we have finished the tutorial. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. And I want to remind you about the challenge. Uh, again, if you want to participate in this challenge to win some cash prizes, you can join the community by investing in my motion bundle deal to start learning After Effects the efficient way. The link is in the descriptions below. I see you in the next one.